Hi everybody, welcome to week nine. Uh, this week we're going to talk about uh, particle systems and physics and simulation, which should open up a lot of interesting possibilities for animation and interaction using P5.js and computing. Uh, okay, so the, uh, what we're trying to get to when we say particle systems, we're talking about things like this. They're, they're fun to look at. This one's running at a pretty slow frame rate. Uh, uh, but uh, you, you see something visually interesting because our eyes, I think, uh, just understand that nature is complicated, has many objects, and um, objects um, can interact with physics. Uh, so, you know, all these things bouncing around, just moving on the screen, kind of makes sense to us. And uh, if we can control uh, the behaviors of these particles and uh, customize their actions computationally, then uh, we can make all kinds of interesting things happen. You know, imagine, imagine if, these, if these particles were um, uh, actually reflecting the color of some underlying image, then we could have some busy bubbling image uh, combined with physics in some bizarre way. So that's, uh, that's the kind of thing we're trying to get to. Unfortunately, in terms of teaching this, well, this is what the code looks like. It's not really that bad, but it's, it could be a little intimidating uh, jumping into uh, particle systems which combine, first of all, objects. Every particle is an object. Uh, so obviously we're going to have to store those in arrays, so we get objects in arrays, and in order to do this behavior we're going to have to um, iterate over those arrays, so we have iteration. And then finally, what's happening down at the bottom is each one of these particles is obeying some uh, physics, laws of physics, or some simulation of laws of physics, and, and those are non-trivial. So we kind of have to go from the micro particle level, what does a particle do, out to the, um, uh, the, the, the big level of uh, a system full of particles and, and how do they behave. And, and so it's a lot to take in at once. So what we're going to do today is start with a very simple um, single particle and we're not going to use objects, we're not going to use arrays, we're just going to talk about the behavior of a single particle. And then what you're going to do in lab tomorrow is look at um, how this uh, uh, gets packaged up into an object so that you can have many instances of these single particles. And you'll look at modifying some objects to add color and perhaps some other um, variables and you know and then we'll elaborate on that through the week but today the focus is on just the physics within a single particle and how do we model that stuff uh, so here we have a sketch it's it's actually running at the left nothing is happening um, you should be very familiar with this we're drawing an ellipse at px py nothing so fancy so the first thing is let's implement velocity. All right, so we're gonna make a new variable px velocity, uh, set it to two, and another variable p, well actually, let's set that to zero. py velocity equals one. And how do we deal with velocity? Well, we can say px at each frame is incremented by the velocity, which is going to cause it to move. And we'll do the same thing with y, and save that and run it. And there we go. Uh, the particle is moving in a downward direction. It just falls off the screen. That's great. Uh, we could give some x velocity, run it again, and now it's moving in another direction. It doesn't look very physical uh, because there's no gravity. Um, so let's think about gravity. What does gravity do? Well, gravity, in simple terms, exerts a force on an object. And what is that force? What happens if something's moving 
and uh, or, or even not moving, and you apply a force to it, it tends to move in the direction of the force, right? And if you keep applying the force, it's going to move faster and faster. All right, so, so what's really happening is that force is somehow being accumulated onto the velocity, so the velocity gets bigger and bigger in the direction of the force. Technically, if, if you know some physics, uh, we would more properly say that it's the acceleration is accumulated or integrated into the velocity. And, um, but force and acceleration are proportional, and I don't want to get into details on that. So let's just say, let's make a variable called px force. And uh, let's think about gravity. So gravity exerts a downward force, but not an x force, right? So no force in the x direction. Uh, in the y direction, the y force is um, some number. Let's just make up a number uh, for force. And so again, the force is going to apply not to position, but to velocity. So we're going to say the x velocity plus equals px force and particle y velocity is incremented by py force. And let's save that and run this one. Oh, and look at that. So let's run it again. You can see that the ball is kind of moving in an arc. If we, if we wanted to make gravity stronger, we could do that. Let's set force to 0.8. Okay, so now I think we can really see things accelerating. You know, we could even start higher up on the screen and watch this again. Boom. Okay, so, uh, so we're moving right at a constant velocity because nothing is making the velocity change, and we're moving downwards uh, at an accelerating velocity because we're accumulating this force of gravity, PYF. All right, so that's cool. What about bouncing? Let's, let's bounce off the bottom. Okay, so we're going to say if PY is greater than height, then what? First of all, I'm going to set PY equal height, just because if we go off the edge and start playing with things, bad things might happen. So this is kind of an approximation, but um, just to be safe. And then I'm going to say, so what happens when you bounce? The velocity flips. So we're going to say PYV equals minus PYV. And that should make things bounce. So let's see if, see if we can get a bounce happening here. Boom. Look at that. It bounced way high. Does that seem right? Uh, it might be right if you have a super ball or something that's very elastic. But a lot of times bouncing is not elastic. You know, if I... Um, uh, drop a golf ball or, or uh, you know, something that, that doesn't bounce perfectly, then um, the bounce is not going to be as high. So, so we're going to call that damping. Um, and let's say that the bounce, let's say that when you bounce you get 70% of the velocity and the rest is lost in the bounce, you know, to friction or whatever. So um, we can just say damping here. Uh, the, the new velocity after the bounce is the opposite of the old velocity, but it's reduced to 70% of what it used to be. Uh, so we'll save that and run it. And boom, here's the bounce. Oh, it's not bouncing as high. Uh, that's cool. I'd like to see some more bounces. Um, what if we reduce the x velocity now to 1? And uh, so it's going to move left to right more slowly. We get to watch some bounce, successive bounces. And, uh, you know, that's beginning to look, it's a little slow somehow. It seems like our gravity is not quite up to par. So maybe we can, 
add gravity and things will go a little faster. Uh, yeah. So you, we can play with these parameters, change, change gravity. You know, we could interactively turn gravity on and off. Um, all kinds of fun stuff. But um, what else can we do? The other thing I want to show is drag. So, you know, if you, if you throw a baseball or a golf ball, it's going gonna, it's gonna to move, it's going to continue moving at about the same speed, and it'll look kind of like this picture. But imagine if you throw a beach ball to someone. Well, the beach ball is really lightweight, and it has to push a lot of air, and the air is going to create drag, so the ball will actually slow down. Uh, so we can model that with another parameter we're going to call drag. And I don't know what the value should be, but we're just going to make up a value. And um, so what, how does drag work? Well, if there's drag, drag is like a force that's pushing in the opposite direction of velocity. So let's imagine that that force, well actually I, I just know, <laughs> in, in air the drag is proportional to the square of velocity, um, roughly speaking, So which is kind of interesting. That means if you're driving a car at 60 miles per hour, uh, well let's say you drag a car, you drive a car at 30 miles per hour it has a certain kind of drag. If you double your speed to 60 miles an hour, the drag goes up with the square. So instead of double, you double the velocity, but it's two squared or four times the drag. And uh, uh, so that um, has to do with aerodynamics. And so we're gonna, we're gonna set the drag to be proportional to the square of velocity. And if we really did this right, we would have to come to compute the square of velocity, we'd have to compute um, x squared plus y squared would be velocity squared. Um, and then we would have to figure out the x component and the y component. And it gets a little complicated, and I want to keep this short. So I'm going to cheat. This is not going to be quite accurate physics. Uh, but let's just say the force is going to be uh, pxv times pxv. So that will be uh, since it's a square, it's always positive. Um, that'll be the square of the x velocity. And so we're, we're just going to say drag is proportional to that. So we'll multiply that by drag. That's an expression for drag. And remember that's a force. So we're going to say pxv minus equals the square of pxv times drag. So that's like a little extra force in the opposite direction of motion. And we'll do the same thing for y, pyv times drag. And I'm not sure what this is going to look like, but let's just run it and see what happens. Oh, so it seems like it's not accelerating as much because at the faster the ball goes, uh, the greater the drag. <clears throat> and in fact, this would actually, if you drop from a high enough distance, you, you reach what's called terminal velocity, where the force of gravity is exactly countered by the force of drag, and, and then you have a constant velocity. Well, it seemed like the drag was a little high, uh, so let's, let's cut it down to 0 0.004 and run this again. Okay, so we're not we're not only getting bouncing, but we're getting some drag, and uh, but we're still bouncing down there. I don't know if you can see that in the video. Uh, we're we're bouncing along. There's really not very uh, very much drag. I think that bounce is actually being supported a little bit by the fact that we're bumping py up to height. But anyway, that's the idea. Uh, so let's. What have we done? We've we've uh, modeled position with x and y. We've modeled velocity with pxv, pyv. And we accumulate velocities by adding into px on every frame. So that, that generates motion. Uh, then we modeled force and acceleration by accumulate, doing the same kind of accumulation, but we're accumulating velocity 
instead of position. Uh, and then finally we did uh, damping so that things don't always you know maintain all of their energy when they bounce and we modeled drag so that when things go too fast there there's air resistance and they slow down so all of these things have lots of parameters you can play with them you can make up your own kind of physics uh, if you want to you could have physics where gravity changes depending on where you are um, all sorts of possibilities but I'm gonna leave it there and uh, leave it to you to implement your own system and, and play with it for the rest of the class. And I'll see you next class.